Hey, um, I'm Jessie Baker, so I'm from London. Um, and in 2013, while I was doing a PhD in computer science, I founded a project, which is now a social enterprise called Provenance. So we're a small team. We're based between London and Berlin. Um, and the aim of my talk today is to really get you excited about how things are made, the journeys all of our products go on. And that could be a journey back in time or a journey into the future where products eventually end up. Second part of my talk, so that is the creation and life cycle of material things. The second thing I really want to get you excited about is I was disappointed to see lots of you didn't attend the decentralized uh, tracks yesterday. I want to hopefully convey to you the massive opportunity that exists for decentralized applications. Provenance, we are building a decentralized application that's non-financial, which at the moment is, is quite rare. However, I think there exists a, a really, really huge opportunity for massive change powered through uh, something called the blockchain. So I think it's important to open a talk about making and things by saying the best things in life aren't things. But it's difficult to escape the impact that manufacturing stuff and, and our physical world has on our lives, has on immaterial things, like our environments, like our relationships, like people's lives. And I think we wouldn't be here at, at WeShare if we didn't care about serving something a little bit greater than ourselves. And uh, me at the team of Provenance have decided to serve the creation of material things. How can we ensure that things are made in a better way? And how things are made matters, I believe. Uh, currently, we go shopping and we, we look around and, and we make decisions about what to buy based a lot on what something looks like. So perhaps the brand, perhaps what it actually looks like, does it fit in with my style? Um, and the price, the price ticket is still, is still one of the key, key factors for how we decide what to buy. However, there's a lot more behind products, a lot more. Um, and currently, we aren't using that information to, to power our decision making. We can try through uh, various marks, accreditations, bits of extra information. But it's very difficult to really make an informed choice particularly when that fair trademark is just a flimsy JPEG inside a web page. What does that even really mean? So a lot of people much smarter than me have said that transparency is the key. We need to know a lot more about how things are created in order to try and assess what's being created well and what's created badly. See, the terms ethical and sustainable have quite a lot of nuances to them. What's ethical to me might not be ethical to you. And really, is anything sustainable? So me and a small team have set out on that quest to making the supply chains um, of our products more transparent. However, it's incredibly complicated. Business still exists a lot today um, and sees competitive advantage in an asymmetry of knowledge. Why would I want to reveal to you, as Emil just said, who my suppliers are, where things are made, details of my design? That's my competitive advantage. Yet, how can we create transparency about supply chains if I can't reveal exactly uh, who my suppliers are? So there have been some third parties that have attempted to broker supply chain information. So to act as a sort of a silo for all of that supply chain information that can then push out the relevant information out into the world to help us make more informed choices, analyze supply chains. However, this seems like a tall order. What organization could possibly broker all of the information about all of the company's supply chains in a way to make some of that information transparent to us as consumers? It took me a long time to work that out, but I realized no central organization can make supply chains transparent. There is no one powerful enough, the UN, the World Bank. And why? Because centralized systems are flawed. They're fundamentally flawed. They create a single point of weakness. They create a single point of brokering of all data. How could a centralized system be so totally unbiased and so totally strong as to broker all of the information about the creation of all of the world's products in order to make that information more transparent to us? <laughs> See, centralized systems are actually flawed in general. It's not just uh, supply chain transparency where uh, flawed uh, where, where centralized systems kind of show their flaws. I think uh, there are several talks yesterday, and I'm sure there will be more about sort of the pending doom that is what if all of the world's taxis are being run by Uber, and they have all the data on everybody's taxi movements and are 
essentially in control of how everybody rides in a car. That seems to me like a bit of a centralized totalitarianism that we probably don't want to end up uh, in a situation like that. However, luckily for us, there is a really fantastic kind of new paradigm that exists. Uh, and over the past few years, I've been geeking up on it a lot. Um, and that's called uh, decentralized applications. So the most famous decentralized application, I think, is still Bitcoin, uh, a currency that exists without a bank, yet is still miraculously secure. So Bitcoin is powered by something called the blockchain. Um, I saw a lot of hashtag blockchain going on yesterday. Apologies, I wasn't here. But how many of you know what the blockchain is? A few? Great. See, I think the blockchain is the most exciting thing going on at the moment, technology-wise. It's an enabler in order to create systems that could really solve a huge amount of problems. So at Provenance, we are building a decentralized system for material things. We are attempting to make product supply chains transparent using a decentralized system. Therefore, no one will own the data about uh, all of the different supply chains that are in our system. In fact, everyone will, will own it. Um, and what it allows us to do is to, um, so this is our, our DAP, decentralized application that we're building on the Ethereum blockchain. And it, what it allows us to do is uh, create end-to-end -end transparency, but without all of the data needing to go up through us as a, as a large silo. Um, in fact, it's the perfect tool to create end-to-end -end transparency. But it also allows proof of ownership, which is very interesting. So it allows anyone to trace back the chain of custody of a product. So how has something changed hands? And it does this in a database that is collectively owned. So this means that provenance is actually just an interface to a database that we have no control over. All we've done is, is help people connect to that database. Essentially, all we are is a user experience. But what it means is that people can trust us. They can put their data through us and know that they are being transparent into a system that's going to help everybody rather than a system that's collectively going to help some. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the end of my talk. <laughs> um, uh, no? OK. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go with here. Um, so yeah. So. We, we've been building this decentralized system for um, transparency, and we've been learning a lot, because up until now, most decentralized applications have been purely financial. Um, and there's a few companies, us included, that are embarking on building decentralized applications that aren't purely financial, and that allow different kinds of salient information to be transferred between people, uh, rather than just monetary value. Um, and I, th I think what's interesting is that, uh, rewind to the end, <laughs> um, is the, the sheer kind of power that creating a system that, that you aren't the silo of all the data brings. It, it really allows you to, cr to create um, a system that's very quickly trusted by, by everybody. So we've been working with several thousand small product making businesses in order for them to share their data onto the blockchain and this allows them to transfer um, information direct to consumer whilst keeping some information hidden back. So some of the information they can transfer direct to the consumer includes things like certifications they have, except now that certification comes with a full chain of custody as to who issued it, when, in what time frame, rather than just a flimsy JPEG on the internet. And it also allows uh, data to have different levels of transparency to different people within a supply chain, which again, helps r drastically solve the problem of business still being p founded on an asymmetry of knowledge. So it allows some information to be kept back, such as who exactly your suppliers are, whilst conveying salient information straight to the consumer. So, sorry, that was a, a jog through slides in <laughs> super, super fast forward. But um, I, th I think we all have a responsibility to try to buy things where we know a little bit more about them. And currently, that is difficult. But I think slowly, with technologies like dApps, we can start to create an ecosystem where we do know more about stuff and can help to make more informed choices. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you.